in Jesus precious name pursuing purpose and vision part 3 Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 I will stand upon my watch and I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Do it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, the soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Fulfilling purpose, or pursuing purpose and vision. Our objective is to understand what it takes to pursue vision and purpose unto actualization. Your purpose is God's original intention for your life. Your vision is your discovery of that purpose. Your purpose is what God created you to do with your life. Your vision is your discovery of that purpose. God has an intention for me. That is his purpose. I have seen the intention of God for my life. That is your vision. And your vision is the determinant of your value in life. Nobody can recover his true value on earth until they have discovered their purpose in life. Your true value. If for any reason an aircraft is used as a taxi cab, it's because its purpose was not known. If for any reason a bulldozer is used to cut grass, it's because its purpose was not known. <laughs> If for any reason an eagle is struggling with struggling for corn with chicken is because his purpose had not been known. Has not been known. The true value of your life is recovered when purpose is discovered. But it is important to know that Purpose does not vision and purpose. They don't fulfill themselves. They have to be pursued. So what is the impact of pursuit? One, to pursue is to pressurize unto fulfillment. When vision or purpose is pursued, you, you have put it under pressure for realization. Doesn't matter how pregnant you are. In the day of labor, until you are ready to push, you are not ready to deliver. <laughs> it doesn't matter how pregnant you are. Vision is a pregnancy. <laughs> We say somebody conceived a vision. 
The process of pursuit is the pressure that pushes it out. No midwife will love you enough to smile with you when you are meant to push. If the midwife or the gynecologist or obstetrician is your mother, your father, your relation, he will harass you to push. If the vision inside must come out. That's how it is. Number two, what is not pursued cannot be possessed. What is not pursued cannot be possessed. Ask the lion. He will tell you about his pursuit of the antelope. What is not pursued cannot be possessed. What is not pursued cannot be possessed. You are not ready for pursuit. You are not ready for possession. The reason why our, there are different levels in our possessions in life is because we have different levels of pursuit. Finally, what is not pursued may not be possible. What is not pursued may not be possible. There was a theorem in mathematics that was called the Fermat's theorem. A man, and that theorem was left unsolved for almost 340 something years. Until a man by the name of Andrew Wiles decided that if it is an equation, it can be solved. He pursued it maybe close to 20 years and solved it. Possibility exists where people pursue. Anything God said to you will happen, can happen. The question is, are you ready to pursue? The land of the giants, the land of Canaan was a land that was filled with giants. You can possess it if you are ready to pursue them. Somebody say amen. Having said all of that, what is the pursuit process? We'll start, arrive at pursuit, and then finish with something. If a vision will come to pass, what will you do? Number one, write the vision. The Bible said, write the vision. Write the vision. Write the vision. We said three things about this and I'm going to rush at it because of time. We said first of all that it is when vision is documented that it receives vitality. The life of a vision is inside its documentation. Nothing pulls the thought like the pen. <laughs> When you put the, the pen to paper, you pull the thought out. Anybody who writes anything will know about this. Vision receives vitality when it is documented. Anything not written down has no right to come to pass. It is wishful thinking and it may evaporate from the mind. He say, write the vision. Why do you write the vision? Second, vision is only reviewable and pursuable when it is documented. You can review it and pursue it if it is on paper. What is God actually saying to me? How am I to go about this thing? It's only reviewable and pursuable when it is documented. Thirdly, Vision can only gain motion with documentation. It gains motion with documentation. It gains motion with documentation. It runs. It's able to run. So write the vision. Look, look for a book. If you want, call it vision book. All those things occurring to you, write them down. Pray them through to be sure they are from God. Write the vision. Number two, 
reveal the vision. That is, view and review. Look and relook. Check and recheck. Check and cross check. Review it. He said that he may run that read it. That he may run that read it. The, the read that thing, that is the review. Read that thing it. <laughs> I'm so sorry for using a bad English, but it's for the sake of understanding. What does review do? Three things first reviewing the vision causes a deepening of the understanding in the vision. Every time you look at what you have written down and you think about it, you gain more understanding. More understanding of what to do. More understanding of how to go about it. The Bible said in Acts chapter 10 verse 19, as Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said to him. So reviewing the vision causes a deepening of understanding of the vision. Reviewing the vision brings comprehension and comprehension brings apprehension. Number two, reviewing the vision causes a refueling, a refiring of passion. Because you don't only need vision, you need passion. You need fire, you need momentum, you need a drive. It is as you revisit it and revisit it that the, drives, the drive is generated. You view it and review. You look at it and relook. Then the fire is burning in your heart. There is an urgency that wants you to fulfill it. Many people have vision but they lack passion. And since they lack passion, the vision has no motion. And because there is no motion, it cannot have a realization. Reviewing causes a refuel. And thirdly, Reviewing the vision facilitates action on the vision. When you look at the vision and look again, you see and see again, then suddenly you realize you need to start doing something about the vision. So review the vision. Number three, what, what do you do in the pursuit process? Plan the vision. Plan. Vision gives you the idea of the destination. Planning gives you the direction. Vision is purpose. Planning is procedure. The doctor has the vision of doing a thyroidectomy. He wants to remove the enlarged thyroid or a prostatectomy or an appendicectomy or a, laparast a laparotomy. And there are standard procedures. He will look at his um, surgery manuals and most doctors will review the manual overnight. Just take a look at, okay, this is how to go through. You cut through here and then like get these arteries and then and then these veins and then go through these ligaments and go through here and do through here and then bypass this and then when you get at this you go through this way and then there is that procedure so you have the plan i want to remove that inflamed appendix now you have a vision the appendix must be removed what is the plan this is how to do from the preparation to the anesthesia to every single thing to post-operation management after the surgery is done this is what to do at the end in order for the for what you have done not to be broken down by infections huh not to be broken down yes that's how it is so the vision is the intention the plan is the procedure the vision that you have is the destination. That is where I want to go. The plan is the direction. 
this is what I need to do to get there. So three things about the plan. First, planning breaks the vision into achievable bits and parts. It breaks the vision into achievable bits and parts. Secondly, all right, there was a statement I made and they wanted to show us. Everything in life is achievable if it can be broken down. Everything. The food that you have is only when it is broken down that it is absorbable. The carbohydrate, the apple that you ate must be broken down. Carbohydrates must be broken down into glucose and, and fructose and maltose and all of them. And the proteins. You break them down. Planning breaks the vision down into more achievable bits and parts. I am a salesperson. And I, read to, I need to make contact in order to generate the enough income I need to generate to impact my world. I need to make contact with 3,000 600 or 50 people a year. Divide that by 10. That is 300 and 56 people in, in under 10 months. Divide that by 30. That is just about 10 people in a day. So what I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to do is not to see how I can reach 3,000 people in a month, but I'm seeing how to reach 10 people daily. Just 10 daily. I don't need to bother about what happens at the end of the year if I can do what I'm meant to do daily. Am I communicating? That's how it is. That's how it is. Take care of the seconds. The seconds will take care of the minutes. The minutes will take care of the hours. The hours will take care of the days. And the days will take care of the weeks. And the weeks will take care of the year. And the years will take care of a lifetime. That's what planning is all about. Secondly, planning identifies the options available for the actualization of the vision. What options do I have? This is what I'm going, I need to do. This is where I need to go. What options do I have? The Bible says, stand in the ways and ask where is the right way? Which particular is the correct one? Thirdly, planning gives room for changes of approach where and when necessary. Okay, I have tried to do this thing this way. It didn't work. Let me see if this other way can work. Planning gives room for changes of approach where and when necessary to change the approach where necessary, when necessary. Planning gives you the room. Like we said, vision is fixed, but the plan is flexible. Vision is fixed. It's a constant the plan is flexible, it's a variable. What you want to do may be constant, but how to do it can change. You can change the plan. This plan doesn't work, it's changeable. Somebody say amen. Number four, pursue the vision, which is the main thing now. Pursue the vision. Pursuit is giving motion to the vision through massive action. You are giving motion to the vision through massive action. That is, you are not waiting for the vision to fulfill itself. You massively act. Also, I said pursuit is giving motion to the vision through massive action. Secondly, pursuit is covering grounds and meeting goals towards 
the actualization of the vision. Covering grounds, meeting goals. The vision must be achieved and these grounds must be covered. These goals must be met. These grounds must be covered. These goals must be met. These grounds must be covered. These goals must be met. That is pursuit. And thirdly, pursuit is operating with the sense of urgency towards the realization of the vision. The sense of urgency. Sense of urgency. Sense of urgency. You know that you don't have eternity to fulfill destiny. You know that yesterday was the best time to do what you have been planning to do. Today is getting too late. Tomorrow is unthinkable. The only time you have that you can be sure of is today. Tomorrow is unthinkable. Not that you will die tomorrow. But events might readjust your plan. Somebody say, God forbid. Pursuit is operating with a sense of urgency. Having said that, we'll go to number five. Be patient with the vision. Write the vision, make it plain that he may run that readeth it. And the vision is for an appointed time. So, at the end it will speak. But if it tarry, wait for it. Visions speak at the end, not at the beginning. Most times, the beginning of, the beginning of most things can be discouraging, can be Challenging, let me say. At times it appears like it, it may not work. So he said, even though it tarry, wait for it. So visions at times may have the tendency to tarry. You expected more results than what you are seeing. You expected results faster than the pace you are seeing. But he said, wait for it. What is patience talking about? Let me say three things. First, patience is maintaining firm and strong. Is remaining firm and strong. In the pursuit of the vision with no room for discouragement or despair. Patience is remaining firm and strong in the pursuit of the vision with no room for discouragement or despair. And be not weary in well-doing. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 and 10. Don't be discouraged in doing verse 9. In doing the right thing because in due season you shall see your reward. If you don't faint, if you don't get discouraged. Keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. What is patience about? Secondly, I said patience is remaining firm and strong in the pursuit of the vision with no room for discouragement or despair. Secondly, patience is confronting and resisting every obstacle or opposition to the vision. So patience is not a gentle force. It is confronting and resisting every obstacle or opposition to the vision without tiring or wearing out. Without tiring or wearing out. Job said, 
all the days of his appointed time, he will wait until change comes. Job chapter 14, verse 14. Finally, patience is the deployment of staying power. Staying. Staying power. That is dash, endurance, resilience, persistence, perseverance, staying power, endurance, resilience, persistence, perseverance, tenacity, pertinacity, until fulfillment. You are enduring. You are, you are resilient. You are persistent. You are, you are persevering. You are tenacious. Stick to it -iveness. You know, stick to it. Stick to it. -ive. Stick to it. -iveness. Just there. According to to Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. That you be not slothful. But followers of them. Who through faith. And patience. Inherit the promise. Everybody who is. Battling with discouragement today. I declare it is over. <laughs> that is patience. And then number 6. Is the twin brother. Patience. Faith. Exercise faith for the fulfillment of the vision. Faith. Faith. For the, when he talked about the vision, then he said, for the just shall live by his faith. Okay, okay, it will happen it must happen what the father said it must happen. It will happen. It must happen. What the father said. It must happen. And that is why he is called Jehovah. That is why you are called Jehovah. What you said you will do, that is what you will do. That is why you are called. O Kamaleya Leya, O Leya, O Kamaleya Leya, O Kamaleya Leya. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. That is a room for faith. Whatever will require God will require faith. Except, except God is not involved. Because without faith it is impossible to move God to action. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Anything that requires God to walk requires faith to be alive. What is faith all about? Faith is exercising complete dependency on God for the fulfillment of the vision. Especially at the place of prayer. Ex 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 exercising complete dependency on God. Complete dependence on God. 
for the fulfillment of the vision, especially at the place of prayer. Oh God, it is not my plan. You are the one who says it is your plan for my life. You will do it. Second, faith is placing the revelation of the world. Above the contrary conditions of life. The revelations of God's word to you, especially regarding the vision, placing it above the contrary conditions of life. If this is what God said, and this is what God has shown, then it must be higher than whatever the devil is saying then it must be superior to whatever the enemy is showing. Placing the revelation of the word above the contrary conditions of life. And finally, are you ready for this? Faith is seeing the invisible, believing the incredible, seeing the invisible, Believing for the incredible, that is the unbelievable, and taking steps towards the impossible. You are seeing the invisible. What does that mean? You are seeing what others can see, you are seeing in the eyes of your mind what physical eyes can see. The way we saw this place before it was built. Your, your vision, if the purpose of God for your life is now invisible, you can't see it physically. Nobody can see it, but in your mind, you know there's where God wants you to go. So you are seeing the invisible, believing for the incredible, and taking steps towards the impossible. It is the taking of steps that moves God to action. If you can believe it, you can see it and you can believe it and you can even begin to act as if it is going to be possible. Then God says, I will join with you because that is my realm where things that are impossible are made possible. Somebody is going somewhere. You have that person say a louder amen. Before I round off this morning, please, I want you to note that every vision is for an appointed time. I said that already. It is the taking of steps that moves God into action. Every vision is for an appointed time. That is, God may say something to you today or show you something today or give you an inspiration today. And the time for that thing is tomorrow. He may give you another one and the time of that thing is 10 years to come. He may give you another one and the time of that one is 17 years to come. There are visions I saw about 30 years ago that I haven't seen in the physical yet. So when you trust God for the plan, also trust God for the time. Because he makes all things beautiful in his time. In his time. His time. Everything is beautiful. When purples marry season, they give birth to beauty. Things are ugly when it is not on time. Somebody say God called him into the ministry. And God wanted him to prepare for five years or seven years before stepping into ministry. And he's stepping today. Everything will be ugly. He himself will not like to listen to his own message. You know a pastor, the wife told the pastor, he said, Husband, please I remain your wife. 
but can you permit me to be a member of another church? I will attend another church. I'm, I'll be, I'm your wife. I'll be very respectful. But I don't be, think I, I, I belong to this ministry. His wife. If your wife does not believe in you, your own don't finish. <laughs> eh? No, don't finish. My, my wife is writing the message I'm preaching now. Not because she is forced to write. She will go and review the message at home. And take time and integrate it. Break it down into action. And also teach the children. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? Say that, that message of Sunday, these are the things I want us to look at. So it's not, it's not, if I, what I am doing is a waste, no, no matter how hard I try, she'll be looking. She may jot some notes to pretend, you know, to please me. And then at the end, to throw away the paper. I say, don't mind the man. He's wasting everybody's time, including my time. Praise the Lord. Take your seat. So some people may go ahead of God. They are not prepared for it. So they are a liability, a burden, a concern, a challenge for everybody. And there are some. God wanted them to enter ministry today. They are entering 25 years later. So God said, who do you think you are? That I, I, I'll be waiting for you for 25 years. You serious? I have called somebody else since. <laughs> I have called somebody else since. Somebody took your place since. So it's very important to avoid frustration. Have some idea of timing. Don't force God. Don't overstep your bounds. Don't underplay your role. Don't go before him. Don't lag behind him. Walk with him. And Enoch walked with God. Let him. Let him assist you to determine your steps per time. With one dream he can set to you. With one revelation he can set to you. With one insight he can set to you. I prophesy to somebody here today. You will not waste your time. There are things that require immediate action. For example, giving your life to Christ. Nobody can say, maybe it is 15 years time. That one, there is nothing like that. Getting serious with God. Being on fire for God. Winning souls. Changing lives. Serving God. That one, the time is permanently present. I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. Being serious with God should have been done since yesterday. I want to clarify that. That time is permanently present. And this is my counsel before we close. It is not enough to possess vision. It is important to pursue vision. According to Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. That is, God said, I will eat roasted chicken today. Then, I sit down and open my mouth. And somebody say, what are you doing? He said, God said, I will eat roasted chicken today. Say, are you waiting for flies to enter your mouth? He said, no. God said, I will eat roasted chicken today. Shakoko babalavarada sikitis. Sakalake frite kuku shalabarada. Roasted chicken. Everywhere you are, I summon you. Enter my mouth now. Am I communicating? That is, that is not faith. 
Look for money and go and buy chicken. <laughs> Am I communicating? Oh, God said, my son, I'm going to bless you so much in the year 2020. In one year, I will get you married. In that same year, you will get a good job. You will get a good car. You will get a good everything. So that I, you can recover all the years of loss. You don't sit at home waiting for the job. And sit at home waiting for a wife. And sit at home waiting for everything. You hit the road. Lord, direct my steps today to where my work is. And you pursue. You make the contacts, you make the calls, you do all the things you need to do. Having done all to stand, then you stand. Everything that is necessary that you can do, you do what you can do, and then you then leave what you can't do for God. Don't sit down and you are waiting. And then, say, are you not going out today? He said, no, no need to go out. God said, he will give me a job this year. I'm expecting a call right now at home. And then you see somebody's daughter. You say, I want to marry <laughs> this girl. And then you, <laughs> you, follow, you follow the girl to the father's house. And you say, what have you come for? You say, I want to marry uh, how much do you bring? You say, no. God say you will marry for me. Shakalaka <laughs> prokotokosa. You are speaking in tongues. Either they call police for you or they call a psychiatrist for you because it's either one of the two. Either you are a criminal or you are mad or you are both. One young man met me some time ago and he said that uh, God sent him to me. I said, eh. Uh, he said, he is the general overseer of a ministry, a new ministry to start. I said, okay. He said, so God said, number one, I should give him 35 million naira. <laughs> number two, that one of my children will be his wife. I will put a car on top of it. <laughs> only God, only God help me that day. <laughs> because such a person, all, what he deserves is physical ministration. <laughs> you, you know, there is a time Jesus and his disciple carry cane. They carried cane and drove some and this <laughs> physical koboko blah, blah, blah. Say, two people, please, you hold his hand. <laughs> you hold his hand. Like, please help me minister to him from the back. <laughs> you know, adversity can correct mentality. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know how I survived that moment, but it was highly entertaining. I think that was what helped me. It was very funny. It, was, it came twice. I, the first time I behaved as if I didn't hear. He returned again. I said, so what did you say? He repeated. <laughs> I can tell you, I know the outcome of that person. No future. Ministry, I start, we started with CC. No CC. When God sends you, if he sends you to the brook charity, the provision is waiting at the brook. Any ministry that has no capacity to release the resources for the ministry from the ministry is a waste of time. Any vision that does not has, have inside it the provision for that vision is a frustration. It may be an ambition, maybe a competition, maybe an imitation. No, 
follow because there are people who have ambition. They thought it was vision. Some is competition. They thought it was vision. Some it is imitation. They thought it was vision. Some is even hallucination. They thought it was vision. Amen. And the second thing, vision, purpose and vision don't get fulfilled in one day. Faith and persistence are required. You need faith that you need to persist. Purpose and vision, they don't get fulfilled in a day. You need faith, you need persistence for their fulfillment. Faith and persistence. You move with faith, persistence, then it will come to pass. It's a new day for somebody. Who is the person that God has spoken to today? Stand on your feet with a loud shout of praise. A louder shout of praise. The loudest shout of praise.